So uh, the hard problem Mindesk is solving is creating a direct link with, between existing um, professional software like CAD software and visualization engine like uh, Unreal Engine. So you can uh, work in AR, VR, and also collaboratively uh, without doing uh, much of a process. Uh, you don't have to export, you don't have to um, change the format of your 3D model, but in a single click, you can jump inside your CAD project and uh, review it or uh, work with, with your colleagues or your clients very quickly. This reduces your time to market uh, by up to 30% and in general helps you creating um, a better design with less errors done in the product production pipeline. You will find this in uh, our website, mindeskvr.com. And I will also invite everybody to join, uh, to join us at the CES 2021. We're good to go. We're ready to talk. Um, so I, so you said, you, I, I'm excited to talk to you, Gabrielle. Uh, uh, so you're, you're the, um, is, so Mindesk and Vection, are these the same company? So Vection acquired Mindesk recently. Okay. I, I founded Mindesk uh, back in 2016. And, uh, and then uh, we recently got acquired. And Vection is a, uh, is an interesting company because they're listed on the stock market on the Australia stock market. And, and we are now basically the, the only listed company in the world that has a focus on augmented and virtual reality for enterprises. Yeah, uh, I, I saw that in your profile just before I talked to you and I thought this quite interesting. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and we're, we are investing a lot on, on the most advanced technologies uh, for, for AR and XR. And just the last uh, uh, achievement was this integration with Vario, uh, which, is, mm -hmm. which is great because we removed one of the barriers from adoption of VR technologies, which was the connection with the external world. So now, because Vario has these pass-through cameras, um, the designers can not only interact directly with the, you know, the 3D model using the controllers, the Vive controllers, but they can also use mouse and keyboards. So they can choose what is the best way to interact with their model. And this, this freedom is, uh, uh, is something that uh, wasn't possible before. So even someone who has never done VR in their life they can keep working with mouse and keyboard because they can see them from VR. But with the, with the advantage of having this 3D volumetric window on their sitting on their table or sitting in the room in one-to-one -one scale uh, to, to help the process of review and, and modeling uh, alone or collaboratively. We are a technology integrator. So our platform does not provide um, CAD modeling by itself, but okay. basically bridges, connects existing CAD software like Rhinoceros and SolidWorks and, and more are coming in the future because it's scalable horizontally on potentially any CAD software in the world. So we are connecting this CAD software to our platform to enable AR, VR, collaboration, cloud, all the all the, the features that we have on our platform. So I think what's what's what I'm seeing so far that's particularly powerful about what um, what Mindesk and now your company is called uh, Vection Technologies because you were acquired by Vection Technologies um, is so powerful is 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 the ability to view and edit and uh, improve your 3D designs in, in mixed reality. That, yes. I mean, that, that, that's kind of my viewpoint. And, 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 and the reason why this is powerful is because without our technology, uh, what, what designers have to do is to export 
their cat in Unity and process it and reduce the, the, the number of polygon and work with UV. It's a huge mess. It's a huge, what I call technical bureaucracy that they have to undergo, which extend the, 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 the process to hours and hours. And, and in, a, in a larger project, you have to do this iteratively for any change, it becomes weeks. Uh, we automate all of this. So in real time, you can change the shape of your car, the shape of your wheel, the shape of your airplane, ship, um, building, everything. And in real time, without having to worry about those, those export and everything, because everything is happening under the hood inside your computer. And we, we, we have been working with NVIDIA and Microsoft to make this uh, mm -hmm. super fast and optimized. And, and I don't, I don't want uh, people watching to miss the significance and importance of, of that point that you just made. That, you know, it's to, what I understood is that people who are working, professionals who are working on their massive architectural designs, can with your software immediately view it in its high resolution and glory without needing to go through a long and lengthy, time-consuming process of downscaling and. And to make it work within the three D environment of Unity, yes. Uh, which, yes, which has limitations that AutoCAD programs don't don't have in terms of how much you can display at once. Mm -hmm. And and also the, the the this is the first aspect. The second aspect is that you can uh, interact with your model. Like for mm -hmm. example, you can select objects and move this object, or delete, or or extend these objects. And this is affecting directly your CAD file because this is the CAD software algorithms being used inside VR. So for example, there are projects um, done, especially in architecture, they use a lot of um, what is called parametric modeling, which is basically scripts running in the CAD software. And these are not, um, is not something that you can uh, replicate in an external software because those are proprietary uh, algorithms of the CAD software. Well, we are able to use them in VR because we interface those CAD software. So we use the original uh, CAD, the original database, the original algorithms, everything uh, that uh, companies use every day. And this is important because uh, you don't have uh, to, to, to get acquainted with a new software. You just um, enhance existing software in your company with AR, VR. This is crucial for enterprises because enterprises are, they don't really like to change their, their current software. Uh, they don't really like to add, uh, you know, new subscription, new, new things. Uh, we adapt. To, to their current tools and necessities. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, so people can work with their existing AutoCAD software. That's, the, that's my big takeaway from that. I didn't realize that when we started the call. Um, great. So I, I think it blurs the, um, uh, the steps that you are going to use as a user when you make the design and also the time of production when you do the des design. So I would like to ask if, for instance, have you made a study or a comparison about the pricing uh, of this vis-a-vis uh, -vis the benefits that it will give the customers? Like for example, if I design a car and uh, I use my old system to this new system, what are the advantages cost-wise and time-wise of those who are going to use this? That's a very, we, we are collecting data on this. It's a very yeah. uh, complex calculation because, and also it, it strongly depends on the kind of uh, development that the customer is doing. We have any sort of customer from aerospace to automotive to ship design, military, architecture, uh, even artists. It's, yeah. it's very, and from, we, we, our customers ranges from the single artist, little artist, up to enterprises with hundreds of thousands of employees. So, and they have so many different needs and so many different return on investment when they invest in Mindesk. But um, if, we, if we have to pick a case, 
imagine the cost of a company that has a process, a development process of months, reducing yes. to weeks. That's huge. That's in the ballpark of, of, of the, the hundreds of thousands of, of, of yeah. dollars. Not to yeah, mention I that using, using VR helps reducing the, it's demonstrated, it helps reducing design errors. Yeah, um, and I was asking the question because in my mind, as we talk um, personally, I just have a lot of imagination and the many uses of this interface that you're doing. Like even for instance, not only for the design of cars, but also for the production of concerts, for instance, which are online. So uh, recently I watched a concert in Japan and they did it online, but because they could not have people, they have a concert without audiences. They had to enhance the experience for the audiences because anyway, it's not a free concert and they had to pay. And using your system, if I am a designer to do such kind of environment um, online, the, the immersive experience is very important. And I think that you know the product that you have, as we go into the transitions, we're, in, we're having a mixed kind of world because not all people will be vaccinated as we transition in the next years. I think it has a very important significance. So I'm, I'm quite excited personally uh, to see you know, the, the kind of uh, um, transitions that your product will do to the market because it has, I, I, you can imagine a lot of use cases. That's correct, and and especially now with with uh, COVID, um, meeting are are impossible. So this is not just you know an optimization tool. This is a tool that enables companies to work. Because if your designers are working from home and cannot meet, uh, we provide a collaborative environment where they can meet. And and, and likewise for your customer, for the, you know our clients' customers. Um, there are architects that are meeting um, their clients uh, in VR, and and now they are able to show different alternative of projects and uh, and edit the projects on the fly without reimporting anything, without asking the customer to come back in a week because they have to redo all the virtual experience. So this is opening amazing doors to the way designer work. Uh, in the direction of being faster, having a shorter go to market and reducing the sign error and ultimately creating better products. I agree, yeah. Uh, I, I would like to see you, uh, you know, uh, blossom in the next year, you know, like if we talk again in the next year and how it has affected, um, you know, the, the transitions that, were, that are happening now is uh, how is that, uh, has it affected the user experience for the developers and how it has also um, influenced companies to change their design thinking on production. And yeah, and the, the kind of uh, workflow that they have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so I, I have kind of a, um, a side question sort of like about how, some, some of the product features. Um, so let's say that uh, some, some of the, uh, you know, I, I guess that some of the most up-to-date CAD software, they're, they're beginning the to way, think in terms of providing UI for, for BR users. But if they don't, <laughs> does, your, um, does your software help to provide that, uh, that BR UI to make the controllers work with, with, with um, different CAD platforms? Yes, and most of CAD software don't really provide the UI in VR. What they do, they have like visualization, visualization square that helps visualizing the, the CAD. That's like, for example, the Salt has, SolidWorks has uh, this uh, e-drawings uh, visualizer, but it's just a visualizer. You cannot really much interact with it. I'm sending okay. you out our um, company decked. Uh, okay, sound, sounds good. Yeah, so that was that was sort of like the, the basic um, 
uh, my thought was that your your that your company is probably providing that that uh, that connection between you know basic computer CAD software and the VR headset, and that would be like the user interface, mapping the controllers, uh, and like you said, people can use their keyboard and mouse, but there's a 3D environment to maintain, and I imagine your company is facilitating that. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And one of the work environments that you, you can provide, you can allow people to import their technology into Unreal Engine so they can do real time sort of like work Render, on. Yes. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so uh, here we go. Let me just give you a second. Um, um, uh, may I ask, um, well, uh, I think you're looking at something that you wanted to show us, but I wanted to ask, what is your vision for your company for at least this year? How do you, what is your plan? How, um, how do you look at your company for this year? Oh, like in terms of growth? Yeah. Um, yeah. So this year, uh, Vection looks at uh, expanding in the U.S. market. Um, which means um, cre and, uh, like uh, creating partnership with the larger, uh, the largest U.S. companies, and uh, creating new, um, new collaboration, new proof of concept, and consolidating the, the existing customers, of course. Um, see, uh, since you're listed, are you listed in Australia or are you listed in other? Uh, platforms. We are listed on the Australian stock market. Mm -hmm. um, so in Asia, um, uh, who are the countries that you're working with now? Worldwide. We Where even have a, a few customers in Africa. <laughs> yeah, it's, so uh, it's, it's really, it's really worldwide. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to, to um, point out that the, the, the website has a lot of really helpful tutorials that people can check out, mendeskvr.com forward slash learn. Um, I just was browsing and, and noticed this. This is uh, very illustrative of uh, what the uh, product um, is and, and uh, what the features are. Thank you. Yeah, we really uh we really we we understand this is a disruptive new technology and we really want to make it as easy as possible to adopt it from uh from the user point of view so we we're trying to provide as much as material as possible what, what do you say to clients to clients who ask you about um a multiplayer feature if they want to um is, is, or is this a future part of the future roadmap so people can look at their CAD models together as a, as a, as a team? It's already, it's already available in our product. Great. How many, how, many, how, how many people uh, can do it? And what, what's maybe what's the practical uh, group size for, for that kind of work? Well, we currently cap this uh, at four. The technology is already, however, it's ready to support more than four. Uh, we're currently seeing customer happy with four, uh, but I could foresee in the future this number growing to, uh, um, uh, like, to, to like uh, an indefinite uh, number. Um, just a side comment also, I'm kind of excited because 5G is not yet available everywhere, but as 5G rolls out and becomes more ubiquitous, just imagine the, the seamless interaction that it will provide for the product that you have now. So yes. yeah, I'm looking forward. To yeah, it. so one, one of the recent integration uh, we, we did uh, in partnership with NVIDIA, it was with CloudXR. Mm -hmm. So with CloudXR, uh, you don't need a powerful machine with you. You can have a very, like yeah. a very simple, Quest 2 or standalone VR, and you mm -hmm. receive the Mindesk VR environment in streaming. Uh, that's very powerful because now it simplifies the, 
the the system architecture for enterprises. So enterprises can have a a, a single mind frame with a lot of GPUs and, and graphic cards, mm -hmm. which then connects via 5G to this headset, and then you can enable multiplayer very very easily. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely. Yeah. Have a great say yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Good luck. <laughs>